The Scholastic Ball Report is sponsored by UK Sports Medicine and by Crown Trophy, Double Dogs, Mingi Beef Jerky, Prep Spin, P-Rats, Rafferty's, Roberts Insurance, Sutherland Chevrolet, and by Whitaker Bank. Hello, I'm Gary Ball, and welcome to the Scholastic Ball Report. We've got a great show for you this week. We have a feature from WKYT from around the state. The Crown Trophy Scholar Athletes of the Week are from George Roger Clark Dance Team. They're fantastic. And the Roberts Insurance Special Team of the Week, the Franklin County Lady Flyers, undefeated this year, ranked in the top 10. From Nicholasville, we have another Sutherland Chevrolet Drive of the Week with some great sports action. And from UK Sports Medicine, we have Laurie Blunk in with Bridget DeVries. Well, we know what you want. The best high school highlights in the state of Kentucky. We've got them. It's called Game Time with Brian Milam, Alex Walker, and Lee K. Howard. And we begin with Scott County and Brian Station. This is the first of two regular season matchups, district matchups between these two opponents. The uh, First one was a good one, and Brian Station was out and running. Fast-paced game. Trenton cut right to Jaden Green. Brian Station was up by 10, but here comes Scott County. Micah Glenn, he's slippery, weaving his way through the defenders, plus the foul on the other end. It's a three-point ball game. Later, Isaiah Haynes is looking up ahead right there, going to find Jeremy Hamilton in transition. That's a one point game at this point near the end of the quarter though. Here comes the Bryan Station quarterback. That's cut right to bless Comuna back to cut right corner three is good. Plus the foul plus the yell. Bryan Station wins a close one 67 to 61. We head now to the capital city where Western Hills hosts Great Crossing another district matchup. Second quarter the Hills have eyes. That's cool. McDonald step back. Jay got it. Wolves up 14 11. At the other end, Great Crossing's Vince Dawson along the baseline. A little spin cycle. He's going to hit the short jumper. Hawks down one. More now from the Warhawks. Off the gauge, Richardson miss. Big man Malachi Marino. We know that last name. 13 points, 11 blocks, 19 rebounds for the 6'8 freshman. Is that good? He's a budding star, Lee K. They win 62-51. All right, Woodford County, they've won six of their first seven tonight, hosting Paris, third quarter. Yellow Jackets trying to open up a big lead, third quarter. Jackson Twombly, three ball, 55 to 13. Yes, you heard that right. Then off the miss, Woodford's big man, John McRear with the board. Look how big that guy is. The Massive. put back there, we have a running clock in Versailles. At the other end, Jakari Ransom dribbles into the teeth of the Woodford defense, misses, but stays with it. The end one. Woodford County rolls tonight, though, 71 to 21. Signing day, a special time for all involved. And at Douglas today, three Broncos making it official. Dane Key is coming to UK. Also, Caden Johnson signing with Ball State. Quarterback Sam Cornett will be making his way to Western Carolina. For Key, he will follow in his father's footsteps. But make his own path with the Kentucky Wildcats. Four players signing letters of intent this afternoon at LCA. Running back Xavier Brown going to Virginia. The Gatorade Kentucky Football Player of the Year. Mason Moore signs with Miami of Ohio. Tyler Morris with Navy and Anthony Johns with EKU. Belfry running back Isaac Dixon was named the Kentucky Football Coaches Association winner of the Mr. Football Award. Dixon rushing for 1,986 yards, 29 touchdowns, but it was his performance in the Class 3A title game, which was off the charts sensational. 376 yards, five touchdowns, leading Belfry to its eighth state championship. And that run right there was the clincher. Woodford County had one of its greatest seasons ever. And today, Dennis Johnson named as the coach of the year by his KFCA brethren. The Jackets going 13 and one, advancing to the Class 5A state semifinals. Woodford County's 13 win season, the most victories in in school history and the most since 1989. Welcome back into the Scholastic Ball Report for the Crown Trophy Scholar Athletes of the Week segment. The Crown Trophy Scholar Athletes this week are from George Rogers Clark High School. 
With us is dance team coach Andrea Rector and two dance team members, Maggie Zizing and Emily DeBoard. Welcome in, y'all. Thanks for having us. That's great. So, Andrea, you've had a very busy weekend uh, <laughs> as the host site for the KHSA State Dance Championships as well as the Cheer Championships. So talk about the prep and some of the things that goes into an event like that at your great facility. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so having um, an event that size, it, of course, it takes a lot of work and preparation. The biggest thing for us is, you know, trying to find the additional help. But we have great faculty and staff at GRC that are willing to jump in and help out wherever they can. Um, we also have some of the best facilities in the state, if not the best facilities. And so we are very fortunate to get to host um, these big events. So having the state um, cheer competition back to back with the dance competition and hosting all these people from all over the state was such um, an honor for us. And we are so glad that we were able to have um, groups like these come and see our facilities. Um, but yeah, like it, it was great and we had a great time. I heard it went really, really well. So yes, uh, yes. part of the uh, Crown Trophy Scholar Athlete is the scholarship part of that. So introduce mm -hmm. your dance team members and talk about their academics. Okay, so over here we have um, Maggie Zeising. Um, she is a sophomore at GRC and she is our captain on the dance team. She is involved in a lot of extracurriculars at school and she is um, doing fantastic in all of her classes. Um, she is a very bright individual and very involved in her uh, in the school. And then we have Emily DeBoard over here, same thing. She's our co-captain um, and she is also very into the theater um, and the arts at our school. Um, and she does also fantastic in all of her classes. We actually have finals um, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, whoa. So let me ask Maggie. Maggie, how did you get interested in the dance team? I feel like I've been doing dance my whole life and it's something I just like really love doing. So when I got to high school, I was super excited to join like the high school dance team. So what is your dance background? Did you start in ballet? Yeah, <laughs> three years old ballet. Um, <laughs> then I just gradually kept going. <laughs> So how long have you been participating since you were three, I take it? Probably eight plus years. There you go. Great. And uh, describe a typical dance competition. Okay, so first, bright early in the morning, <laughs> got to get all your stuff together, get on the bus, got to travel. Most of the time you have to do your makeup on the bus. Normally ends in a disaster. Right. <laughs> but, then you get there and you have to do warm ups and you have to practice and with the music and then eventually you just go out and do it. <laughs> yep. Wow, that's great. Uh, I I was trying to get over there this past weekend, but I had uh, Nutcracker Ballet because I'm involved with that here in Lexington. So, Emily, let me ask you, what got you interested in joining the dance team at GRC? Well, I start, uh, started doing dance at a very young age. Um, at five years old, I started doing ballet, and then I did cheer for about two years. Um, did not like that. Um, and then I just recently, last year, in my freshman year, I joined um, GRC dance team, and ever since then, I've fell in love with it, and it's just been something I've stuck to. So do you have a favorite aspect about being a dance team member? Um, yes, I love being a part of a team and just being um, in something so big and just expressing yourself whenever you're dancing is just such a big opportunity to take and it's wonderful. So what motivates you in the classroom? Um, Definitely studying and definitely lots and lots of hard work. Um, you would, I usually go with friends and like make sure I have notes taken down, definitely have study guides, definitely have homework on top of everything. Um, and yeah, just being on top of everything and being very organized. Well, those are great habits. 
Well, thank you, Andrea, Maggie, and Emily from George Rogers Clark, doing well academically and with the dance team as well. Thank you for being with us on the Scholastic Ball Report. Thank, thank you. you. Hello, welcome back to the Scholastic Ball Report, the Roberts Insurance Team of the Week. The Roberts Insurance Team of the Week, Franklin County Girls Basketball Team. They're off to a 7-0 start this year under Coach Stacker, and Coach Stacker is with us with uh, Patience Laster and Avion Carter. And Coach, how's the season been for you so far? Well, you know, so far we've played really well. Um, we played some quality opponents. We've gotten a lot of kids some experience that really needed it coming into this year's team. And uh, we feel like so far, so good. Do you play, uh, I know you played in the Scott County tournament. What about some other post tournaments you played in? Well, you know, we just won the Toyota Classic and we're going next week to Bullet East Queen of the Commonwealth. And it's loaded. Right. It's Sacred Heart, Bowling Green, Notre Dame, you know, Bullet East, it, it's a really good field. And then later on in the year, we'll play in the LIT, which you have to get invited to. So we feel privileged to get to do that. Were your goals coming in the season to win the Scott County? Was that your first goal? And then maybe win all those other tournaments you're playing in? I think so. You know, I think our kids really, they valued the fact that we got invited to play in the Toyota Classic. And we got to play three quality opponents. And all of our kids really performed well. Um, and this group is a hungry group, you know, that they, they, they've met, they have meshed well together. We got a lot of people back from last year's team. And uh, I'm just proud of the effort they've put in so far uh, because, you know, our schedule's pretty tough normally. Well, Coach, introduce each player with us and tell us what position they play for you this year. Well, Patience Laster is, uh, you know, she's our starting four. Uh, she started for me since she was in eighth grade. She's averaging nearly 15 points and 15 rebounds a game. Uh, she's doing what we expect her to do. And uh, she's played really well so far. And Nevea Carter has also played for me since she was in eighth grade. Nevea's our point guard. She runs our team. Uh, and I think she's the best guard in our region right now. I think she's playing lights out. Well, let's get Patience Laster in here. Patience, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, when did you start playing basketball, Patience? Um, in fifth grade, I I was playing basketball outside, and I went home and told my mom, like, I want to play basketball, and they said okay. What was your What's your favorite thing about playing basketball, Franklin County, other than winning all the time? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably. Playing big games. Yeah. Pop, yeah, playing big games. Big games. Okay. And uh, what position do you think you're playing college? The three. Okay. <laughs> Let's get uh, Navion in here. Navion, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. <laughs> what got you interested in playing basketball? The people around me, they just... Love to see him play, and I wanted to get involved. What skills do you want to work on the most as you move forward? What skills do you want to work on the most? My shooting. Yeah, that's this out of this world. Terrible. <laughs> so uh, let's ask you your point guard. You can handle the ball, so you, you probably don't need to work on passing, do you? <laughs> no, not really. Just Just a little bit more, though. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming on. Let's get Coach Stacker back in there and talk to him some more. Coach Stacker, your players let their game with the talking, don't they? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we don't have a real vocal group. You know, we, we've had some kids in the past that were uh, real loud leaders, but both these kids really do the job on the court with their game. I mean, that, that is, that's very, very, very true about them and really our senior class and a lot of our upperclassmen. Well, Coach Thacker, it sounds like you're off to a great start this season. Thank you for being on the show, and uh, we appreciate you, and good luck in the uh, tournaments coming up, all the tournaments you're Thanks, playing. Thanks, Gary. In. Thank you, Gary. Good to talk to you. Thanks, Thanks. for having us.
That's a Franklin County basketball team. Robert's insurance team of the week. We'll be right back with more on the Scholastic Ball Report. Time now for your Sutherland Chevrolet Drive of the Week, and it comes at East Jessamine High School in Nicholasville. Lincoln County, the drive is a drive from downtown. This Patriots team is undefeated, and every single guard on that roster can hit the three ball. Jackson Smith, Evan Smith, Colton Ralston, they can all get it done. And Lincoln County, they hammer East Jessamine. They're now 7-0, and and that is your Sutherland Chevrolet Drive of the Week. Welcome back into the Scholastic Ball Report and the UK Sports Medicine segment. Today we have Laurie Blunk, UK Sports Medicine Athletic Trainer. Welcome into the Scholastic Ball Report, Laurie. Thanks for having me again. Today we are talking about a very important topic, hip and core strength. So tell us why is hip and core strength so important in athletics? So your hips and your core are really important components as far as um, balance and stability when you're doing activity. Um, having good core strength and proper hip mobility also helps a lot from an injury prevention standpoint as well. Gotcha. And uh, who could benefit from a core strengthening program? Honestly, everybody from the Weekend Warrior, all of our athletes, um, any and everybody that you can think of can can benefit from it. Um, having a good, strong core um, is important, again, like I said, to help with injury prevention. It can also help to reduce a lot of back pain. Several people suffer from back pain. Um, so just making sure we're strengthening our core and that our hips are working properly and we have good mobility and strength in our hips as well is important. Gotcha. We well, you know some of us are more sedentary than we would like to admit. And a lot of students that are working and student athletes from home have done a lot of NTI work for so long. How has that affected our hips and our core strength? So I know personally as an athletic trainer, one thing that I've seen with some of my athletes, we had a lot of hip flexor issues last year across all sports. Um, our hip flexors and our kids were just tight from being seated at a computer so long. Um, that happens just in the general public as well. Those that do um, just desk work eight hours a day, a lot of what you see are tight hip flexors and weakness in your glute muscles, your butt muscles. So when that happens, a lot of people either suffer from muscle strains like in the hip flexors like we saw, or a lot of people develop back pain from just sitting there so long and everything getting thrown out of whack a little bit. That's good to know. We should all, we need to all work on that. So, well, thank you, Laurie, for that important information on hip and core strength. Thank you. And that's the value of having somebody like Laurie on site to give good advice on medical treatment and health issues. That's Laurie Blunk from UK Sports Medicine and Healthcare, keeping us healthy and safe for all high school activities. We'll be right back with more on the Scholastic Ball Report. Welcome back. We head to Louisville now for the annual King of the Bluegrass Tournament this afternoon. North Dunbar, North Dunbar. Them too. Dunbar and North Oldham. <laughs> new school. Up at Fairdale. Yeah, new school alert, right? The Bulldogs entering the game. Not to be confused with South Dunbar. Yeah, hey, look, you know, <laughs> long night, right? First quarter off the give and go. It's Zach Carter down the lane in the bucket. Then off the loose ball, Dunbar's Nick Spaulding. I feel like this kid's been in high school for like seven years. <laughs> he always hits threes. Dunbar, though, they fall in Louisville, 75-54. Also at the King of the Bluegrass, it is North Laurel. That's a North Directional School. And UK commit Reed Shepard meeting up with yep. Eastern after suffering its only loss so far to Greenwood. North Laurel has won eight straight, excuse me, has won the last three straight games. This is rough, huh? <laughs> Early it was uh, Shepard from distance. There he is, the Kentucky commit. He is good, if just in case you didn't know. Here he is, the triple, that is good. And then on the assist, Clay Sizemore, there's Shepard. He's finding Clay Sizemore, nice little move over there. Another three ball. Sizemore can really shoot it, really. We've seen him a lot this year. Then dribbling through the defense, Shepard, 
The high arcing bank shot. Shepard with 15 points, 14 assists. North Laurel advances in the King of the Bluegrass Tournament, 72-56 the final. Well, that's our show for this week. Coming up is Christmas break. We'll be back on January 9th with more high school highlights. As always on the Scholastic Ball Board, we thank the team that makes it possible. William Moorfield, King of Stream from Fresh Pen. Joel Clace, our director. Bridget DeVries, our executive producer. But remember, for those you see and those you don't see, keep your eye on the Scholastic Ball Report. Merry Christmas, everybody. The Scholastic Ball Report was sponsored by UK Sports Medicine and by Crown Trophy, Double Dogs, Mingy Beef Jerky, Prep Spin, P-Rats, Rafferty's, Roberts Insurance, Sutherland Chevrolet, and by Whitaker Bank.